you feel me? So my presentation is about uh, basically visualization of a human motion vector. Uh, understanding of human motion form is important in many areas such as sports, dance, animation, medical, and so on. In these areas, people often need to understand the variations in the motions of a specific form. And many kinds of sports and dance have some forms to them, like the ski form, maybe ski form in the first presentation. And for example, playing on the tennis training practice of short form, as shown in this video, you actually need to understand the manifold of a good motion rather than single ideal motion because there are some variations even in a good motion that are performed by experts. We call the range of motion form including such variations motion manifold. So understand. So understanding of motion manifold is important and to understand the motion form. The main problem is that human motions are difficult to understand because the motion is a time varying high dimensional data as shown in this graph. So even understanding of a single motion is difficult. And playing back a motion clip as an animation is a common way to view a motion. However, because one, one pose, only one pose is displayed at a time during animation, it's difficult to understand, it, understand the characteristics of the motion. And the motion manifold is a range within high dimensional motion space. So understanding of a motion manifold is more than understanding of just single motion. So the purpose of this work is to visualize motion manifold of motions in a specific form by generating 3D shapes that represent the motion manifold. We call these 3D shapes motion volumes. Uh, this is an example of a method for eight motions of a tennis, mo tennis forefront shot that are performed by a skilled player. The input data are spatial and orientation trajectory of body parts from all the input motions. And we can see that there are some vari variations in these motions. The output visualization contains 3D shapes that represent the spatial and orientation ranges of these input motions. So our approach is to generate 3D shapes for visualizing motion volumes by selecting key poses for each timing and by generating spatial and orientation volumes for each body part. The user can understand the motion of manifold by observing these motion volumes. And for visualization, because our method just generates static 3D shapes. The viewing position and orientation can be freely chosen by the user. Also, our method visualizes spatial and orientation uh, range, ranges of motion, but does not visualize temporal information of motion, just uh, static 3D shapes to represent the range of space position and energy. So this is an example of a visualization. Input data are spatial on, on the orientation trajectory of body part from all input motion. And this is uh, output of visualization contains 3D shapes that represent spatial and orientation ranges of body part. In the input motions. Okay. Uh, it's system related work. To help people understand a motion, many methods have been developed for depicting a motion as a single image by choosing and drawing important key poses. Recently, Dan et al. proposed mm -hmm. MoScalp system, which generates 3D shapes for representing the trajectory of body parts from an input video. Uh, their research is similar to ours, but uh, their system takes only one motion and visualizes only the spatial volumes. And some method has been developed for visualizing many different motions. These methods are intended for categorizing the motions into groups and depicting the differences between them. So to our knowledge, there is no previous research for visualization of motion manifold. Now I'm going to explain my method. Uh, as an input, our method takes a set of motions. Uh, in a specific motion form, and each motion is represented by a series of poses. And uh, method, our method assumes that the same number of key timings are specified to all input motions. The key timings uh, represent the important moments of a motion. For, for example, for the tennis shot form, we use these three key timings that are shown in this picture. And the, these three key timings are called uh, take back and impact and follow through poses, and they are commonly used in training of tennis. And these key times can be either manually specified or automatically detected using some algorithm. So our uh, method computes the positions and orientation of body parts at each frame of each input motion using the forward kinematics. Then our method generates three types of motion volumes to represent the range of key poses for each key timing and the spatial volume for each body part. 
and the orientation of the volume at each sampling point of each volume part. And I will explain this method in the following slide. For, for each key timing, uh, representative key points, uh, representative key points are chosen. Uh, drawing key poses is a common way to view a motion. However, dis displaying all key poses of all input motions make it hard to see them. So we choose the minimum number of key poses to show the length of poses at each key timing. And these six years are used for rendering the key poses. First, among all example poses, the pose that is close to all other poses is chosen as a primary key pose. And the distance between two poses is computed based on their joint positions. After two poses are aligned, this is a common technique to evaluate the distance between poses. Then a set of poses that are far to the primary pose and to each other are chosen as the secondary key poses. And the number of key poses is manually specified in our experiment. We choose three key poses for each key time. This is an example of a key pose selection. The input is all key poses for three key timings. The output is a selected key pose for three key timings. They represent a range of poses at each key time. Okay, uh, as a special spatial volume for each body part. A shape that contains a trajectory of all input motions uh, is generated. The surface of spatial volume is generated using matching cube methods. Here, the distance fluctuation is a constant value. And for distance fluctuation, we use the distance to the closest sampling point on all the trajectory. This way, the surface that contains all trajectory with a certain uh, margin is generated. Because the, because the trajectory or because the trajectory are represented by a series of sampling points, the genetic surface may become bumpy, so we apply Laplacian smoothing as post-processing. This is an example of a spatial volume generation. The input is a trajectory for the body parts from all the motion. And the output is a geometrical shape that contains all the trajectories for the body parts. They represent the range of the positions of the body parts during the motion. <coughs> Finally, uh, as orientation volume, for each sampling point, for each body part, a shape that represents the orientation from all input motions is generated. Uh, actually, visualizing, visualizing a range of orientation is more difficult than visual, visual, visualizing a range of positions because uh, how to represent a 3D orientation is not straightforward. An um, arrow is a common way to represent the orientation. However, it cannot represent 3D orientation because the rotation around the direction of arrow cannot be represented. And uh, using three perpendicular arrows uh, indicating the local coordinates is also a common way to represent a 3D orientation. However, uh, this is not suitable for representing many orientations because it's hard to see them with these many arrows and uh, it requires different colors for representing these uh, arrows. So to solve uh, this problem of a previous method, uh, we introduced flat arrows to represent a 3D orientation in a simple form. Uh, this way, the rotation around the direction arrow can also be represented. So to visualize an orientation of volume, a complex arrow is computed for each sampling point on the center trajectory for, for, from a set of flat arrows that are close to the sampling point, as shown in this example. A complex arrow is a graphical ge geometrical shape that contains all sample points. And the uh, orientation volume is generated from the vertices of the flat arrow that are associated to each sampling point. And this is an example of orientation volume generation. The input is the orientation on all trajectories. And the output is a generated volume at the sampling point on the center trajectory. They, rep they represent the range of orientations at each point. Uh, now, uh, now I'm going to present some uh, experimental results for visualization. We applied a method to tennis swap on the short form, and all motions were captured using an optical motion capture system with 12 cameras. Uh, we have done two small comparisons. The first comparison is between a set of motions by a skilled player and one motion by a trainee to see the problems of the trainee's motion. 
The second comparison is a bit in a set of motions by a skilled player and a set of motions by another skilled player. So you see that the differences of style between the motions by two skilled players. This is the result of a comparison between the motion volumes of a skilled player, the blue body and the orange volumes in these images, and the motion volume of a motion of a train, the white bodies and the gray geometries. Uh, on the left image, two monifolds of whole body are placed in different positions in parallel, and on other two images, they are placed in the same position, and the motion volumes of a selected body part are visualized for better comparison. <coughs> So we can see some differences between two motion manifolds. For example, the spatial and orientation trajectory of the right hand of the training is deviated from the skilled player's motion around the take, take back and the cross timings. Moreover, the step of the right of, of a training is shorter than the steps of the skilled player. These findings would help the training to understand the problem with, with his or her motion and fix the problem. This is a video of the comparison. In this scene, the two manifold of body, whole body, are placed at the different position in parallel. And in this scene, the two manifold are placed in the same position, and the motion volumes of the right hand are compared. We can see the trajectory of the training is deviated from the skilled player motion. And in this scene, the motion volumes of the right, sorry, right foot are compared. We can see that the step of the right foot of the training is shorter than the skilled player. This is the result of a second comparison between the motion volume of a skilled player, the blue pose and orange volumes, and the motion volume of another skilled player, the green poses and the pink volume. Uh, although they are basically similar, we can see some differences between them, and uh, these findings will help for understanding the characteristics of the motion forms of individual players and uh, analyzing them. This is a video of a comparison. In this scene, the two manifold, of, two manifold of whole body are placed at the different position in parallel. In this scene, motion volume of the right hand are compared. We can see some differences around the take back and the follow through poses. In this scene, motion volume of the right foot are compared. They are slightly different. Okay, uh, there are some limitations and future work. As I mentioned earlier, our method, uh, our method does not visualize temporal information of motion. The ranges of spatial rotational velocities are difficult to depict in a way that people can easily grasp. So adding a visualization of temporal information is a future work. And because our method generates a shape, our method generates a shape that contains all examples, it may be affected by noise. Uh, that is, uh, some motion that are deviated from the motion manifold. If we input data set contains such noise, we can include some uh, pre-processing <coughs> for removing noise data or post-processing for smoothing the generated geometry. And when motions are performed in place and have small translations, motion volumes and the keyboard may overlap at one position and may be difficult to see them. So this issue can be solved by deforming the shapes and placing the keyboards in a translated position by scaling them according to the sample time. Uh, in addition, our future work includes suggesting appropriate viewing position so that users can see the important point in the motion volumes. Maybe if the distance between two manifolds is large. Mm -hmm. So, in conclusion, uh, we propose a method for visualizing motion volumes of human motions by generating 3D shapes that represent the motion manifold of input motions. Uh, we, we presented some small experimental results of application to 2400 shop homes. Uh, although, although we just made just a small uh, experiment this time, but I, I think our method is uh, promising and uh, we want to. There's more on more other applications. <laughs> and our, our future work includes testing our method to solve the limitations that are discussed in the previous slide, and, to, and, and also application to various kinds of motion forms. Yes. Thank you very much.